All right, so uh, we are looking at the policy effects in the ISLM model, how uh, changes in government spending and taxes and changes in the money supply can affect output and then the equilibrium interest rates. Okay. Basically, we'll be looking at the two policies, the fiscal and then the monetary. Okay. When we talk about monetary policy, we are just talking about how the central bank uh, controls the quantity of money that we have in the system. And then for fiscal policy too, we are talking about uh, the spending of the government and then how the government uh, raises tax revenue. So a uh, fiscal policy just talks about changes in government spending and then taxes. And basically what we have to know is that the fiscal policy affects the IS scale. And then the monetary policy affects the LMK. Okay, that, that's the, the first thing that you have to bear in mind. Don't uh, mix them up. Okay, fiscal policies are just for the ISK, and then the monetary policy too is for the LMK. Okay, so um, uh, these are the things that you will be looking at. As for the derivation of the IS and then the LM, I'm sure we've done those things already. When you go to the product market, the IS curve just talks about combination of interest rate and income that ensures equilibrium in the product market. If you want to derive it, you want to look at the relationship between interest rate and then the output level. So now, uh, assuming there's an increase in the interest rate, it causes a reduction in investment since investment and interest rate are inversely related. Okay. So uh, when it happens like that, there's going to be a fall in aggregate expenditure, and that will cause a fall in income. That is why there's an inverse re relationship between interest rate and then the income level. So initially, interest rate increase, and then it's causing income to, to fall. So you can use this um, mechanism. Or if you take the two-sector model, the, uh, the product market to be in equilibrium when savings equals uh, investment. So when interest rate increases, there's going to be a fall in the level of investment. So to ensure equilibrium, savings must fall. And because savings is a positive function of income, income must fall before savings can fall. So interest rate has gone up because we want savings to fall, income has, has also fallen. So we have a downward sloping ISK. That is the IS curve. Now, uh, for the factors that cause shifts in the IS curve, those are the factors that uh, that form the fiscal policy. Okay, so basically, basically we are looking at government spending and then taxes, and uh, we have expansionary fiscal policy, and then the contractionary. Okay, so for the Expansionary one is where there's an increase in government spending or a reduction in tax. Yes, Andrew. Uh, sir, thank you. Please, I, was, I just wanted to ask, why does savings fall? Is it because equilibrium needs to be ensured? Is that the, yes. the only reason? Uh, yes, we have equilibrium when savings equals investment. So because interest rate has increased and then investment has fallen, there's a disequilibrium. Savings will now be more than investment. So to ensure equilibrium, when well, savings must fall, okay? Savings must fall just to ensure the new equilibrium. But, but sir, with, I, I think we talked about something. I think the, the crowding out effect. No, where... no, 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 no. We, we are not there yet. We, we are not talking about okay. Cardinal. We only have cardinal when there's a change in uh, government spend spending. We we are not talking about that. If there's an oh, increase yeah. in change, that's what causes the cardinal. But oh. that's what we we're just deriving the ISK. Okay, so for expansionary um fiscal policy, that is when there's an increase in government spending or there's a reduction in tax, okay? 
there's an increase in government spending or there's a reduction in tax. And when it happens like this, it, it causes the ISKF to shift to the right, okay? It's a shift to the right. Uh, what it means is that even at the same interest rate, we will be having a higher income level, okay? So whenever uh, there's an increase in G or a reduction in T, the ISKF will shift to the right. That is the expansionary. Then for contractionary, we reduce government spending or we increase tax. Okay, when it happens like that, uh, income will, will fall. So it's of course a leftward shift in the ISK. Most of the times we use J and NT, but in case uh, you are giving an autonomous change in the investment level, it works just as the way government spending works. So if they increase the autonomous in investment, it will cause the ISK to shift to the right. If they reduce autonomous investment, it will cause the ISK to shift to the left. Okay, so these are the factors that will cause a shift in the ISK. Then for the LMK, if you want to derive it, that one too, we are looking at the combination of uh, income and then interest rates that will ensure equilibrium in the in the goods and in the money market okay so this one to assuming you increase income when you increase income at a given interest rate there's going to be an increase in money demand remember money demand is a positive function of uh, income okay so whenever they increase income there's supposed to be an increase in money demand so increasing money demand will cause excess demand for money, okay, which will cause excess supply of bonds in the bonds market. The price of bonds must fall, okay? Price of bonds must fall. Then interest rate will go up because of the inverse relationship between the price and then the interest rate. So you realize the positive relationship between income and interest rate, okay? Income and then interest rate. So when we go to the money markets, we have an upward sloping LMK, which means whenever you increase income, interest rates will increase. Then about uh, the factors that cause shift in the LMK is the money supply and then the money demand, but because we normally center the analysis on uh, monetary policy, we normally talk about the changes in money supply. When they increase money supply, that is an expansionary monetary policy. If they reduce money supply, we have a contractionary monetary policy. Okay. So now when they increase the money supply, what happens is that uh, we are going to have excess supply of money in the system. That will cause excess demand for bonds. So the price of bonds will go up. Then uh, there's going to be a fall in interest rate at a given income level. So the LMK will shift downward. So whenever they increase money supply, it causes the LMK to shift downwards. And then when they reduce it, when they embark on a contractionary monetary policy, uh, we have, uh, there's going to be a restriction in the quantity of money that we have. So then the supply of money will be less than the demand for money. So we have excess demand for money. That's of course, excess supply of bonds which means that price of bonds will fall, interest rates will go up. So at a given income level, the LMK will shift up. Okay? So an expansionary monetary policy will cause the LMK to shift down. And then a contractionary monetary policy will cause the LMK to shift up. And then money demand too can cause the LMK to shift, but uh, most of the times the money supply that will be there. But it works in opposite ways, okay, uh, to the money supply. If you increase money demand, we we'll have excess demand for money. That's what we call excess supply of bonds, and the price of bonds will fall, which will cause interest rate to go up. So at a given income level, the LMK will shift up. So increase in money demand will cause an a upward shift in the LMK and a decrease will cause a downward shift in the uh, LMK. Okay. So now when, when we bring them together, okay, when we, we bring the two curves together, the, this equilibrium point here gives us our equilibrium income, income and then interest rates. Okay, so 
these values will ensure equilibrium in both the product market and then the, the money market. So this point here is the equilibrium point in both the market. So these are equilibrium output and then equilibrium interest rate. Right, uh, for the algebra, we'll look at the algebra later. Let's just concentrate on the solution. Let's see. All right, so what we want to look at is uh, how will the monetary and then the fiscal policies cause changes in the equilibrium income and then the interest rate. Okay, so as I said earlier, the contractionary monetary policy is where we reduce money supply. And then the expansionary one is when we increase money supply. So uh, what we need to keep in mind, monetary policy only affects the LMK, okay? It doesn't affect the ISK in any way. So whenever they change money supply, it's only the LMK that shifts, okay? So assuming we have uh, this equilibrium point, this is the initial equilibrium point. So these are LM and then this is our IS. So we have equilibrium interest rate as I and that of income as Y. Now, assuming there's an increase in the money supply, okay, as we just saw, it will cause a downward shift in the LMK. So it shifts downwards, and then where it meets the IS curve, that will be the new equilibrium point. Okay, so what is happening here? The expansionary monetary policy is, is causing the equilibrium interest rate to fall, and then the output level to increase. So why, why, why is output increasing? Why is interest rate increasing? You see that when you increase the money supply, we are having um, excess supply of money. So we have excess demand for bonds. The price of bonds will go up and that will cause the interest rate to fall. So when interest rate falls, how does it cause the output level to increase? It goes through investment. You see, what you need to know is that monetary policy is just enacted so that there will be changes in investment. We know that there's a relationship between investment and interest rate. So assuming the central bank wants to boost the level of output, they know that whenever they increase the money supply, it's going to cause a reduction in interest rates. And whenever interest rate falls, it causes an increase in investment. And since investment is part of aggregate spending, it will cause the output level to increase. So whenever they want a monetary policy, it's investment that they are targeting, though they do the targeting through the interest rate. But the final effect will go through investment. Please, let's, let's note that. Mm -hmm. Monetary policy is just there to affect investment through changes in the interest rate. So you see, when we are talking about the relative effectiveness, let me talk about this now. Because the monetary policy is going through uh, interest rates, which results in changes in the investment, they, 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 they will always look out for times where investment is interest sensitive, okay? For example, we want to increase the output level. So we want to increase money supply, right? Now, when you increase the money supply, we, we are causing a reduction in interest rate. So if investment is very sensitive to changes in the interest rate, as soon as the interest rate falls, the increase in the investment level will be very high, which, which will cause a very high increase in the income level. But in a case where investment is interest insensitive. It means that even if interest rate, interest rate falls, the change in investment will be very small, which means that the change in output to is going to be very small. Okay, so before we get there, let's keep this thing in mind. So whenever they increase the money supply, interest rate will fall, investment will increase, then the output level will increase from Y to Y star. So just in case, uh, you have a question and then there's a monetary policy and you are asked to state why 
interest rate and then the income change the way they, they did. That, that's what you have to say. After increasing in the money supply, we have excess supply of money, which will cause excess demand for bonds. The price of bonds will go up, and that's the reason why interest rates must fall. So that is why interest rate will, will change the way it will. And then for income, after the fall in interest rates, there's going to be an increase in investment. Investment is a component of aggregate spending. So when aggregate expenditure goes up, income to what? Income will go up. Okay, income will go up. Even the increase in income doesn't just stop here. Because of an increase in income, there's going to be an increase in consumption because consumption is positively related to the income level. So after the increase in income resulting from the increase in investments, we'll have uh, income induced increase in consumption, which will also in turn cause a further increase in uh, the output level. Okay, output level will go up again. And we also know that whenever Y goes up, there's an increase in money demand. Okay, there's an increase in money demand. Why? Because uh, money demand is a positive function of income. Okay, it's a positive function of income. So when the money demand goes up, remember initially there was an increase in money supply. So now money demand has also increased to meet the increase in the money supply to ensure the equilibrium at A prime, this one, okay, to ensure this equilibrium. So please, uh, you need to know this the dynamics. Most of the times, after uh, they change, uh, maybe the money supply or something, they will ask you why, why did interest rate and then the income change the way they did. Okay, so these are the mechanics. Just, just be precise and concise. Don't talk much. The thing is a dynamic, okay? So uh, it's a dynamic something. So just, just, just move from one point to the other until you get to where you are going to, and that is all, okay? So what we have seen is that whenever we increase money supply, it causes uh, equilibrium interest rate to fall and equilibrium income to go up, okay? So this is the effect of an expansionary monetary policy, okay? Expansionary monetary policy. Right, then let's look at uh, changes in government spending and then taxes. For, for fiscal contraction or contractional fiscal policy, we, we either reduce government spending or we increase tax. Okay, we either reduce government spending or we increase tax. And then for expansionary fiscal policy, we either increase the or we decrease the tax. So here too, what we have to know is that because it's talking about fiscal policy, it only affects the ISK. It doesn't affect the LMK really. Anyway, okay, doesn't affect the LMK. So, what happens when uh, maybe there is an increase in tax? Just know that an increase in tax will work just the same as uh, a decrease in government spending uh, will work. That is a contractionary fiscal policy. Now, uh, when you increase tax, okay, or you reduce government spending, it causes the ISK to shift to the left, okay? It causes the ISK to shift to the left. So on a, on an, on this old uh, LMK, assuming this was the initial equilibrium point, point A, okay? So this is our initial ISK on this LMK. So this is the equilibrium point with uh, equilibrium interest rate as I and then equilibrium income as Y. Now there, there's an increase in tax, which is causing uh, a leftward shift in the ISK. So this is going to be the new equilibrium point, A prime, okay, A prime. So at this point, what is happening to equilibrium interest rate and then income? Interest rate has fallen, income too has what? Has fallen. So this is the effect of a contractionary fiscal policy. ISK will shift to the right, which will cause a reduction in interest rate and a reduction in the output level. Okay, reduction in the output level. So, uh, an expansionary fiscal policy will work in the opposite way. 
assuming this was the initial equilibrium point. So this is our initial ISK. And there's either an increase in government spending or a reduction in tax. It will cause the ISK to shift from IS0 to IS1, okay? IS0 to IS1. So now, uh, this is going to be the new equilibrium point, okay? So interest rate will go up and then income will go up. But let's, let's observe something here. You see that uh, when the ISK shifted to the right, okay, uh, equilibrium moved from E0 to E1, and that is causing an increase in interest rates. But just assuming that after the shift in the ISK, there was no change in the level of interest rates, okay, this would have been the output level. It would have been YC, okay. It would have been YC because the ISK will touch the old interest rate here. But now because of the increase in interest rate, it's causing a reduction in investment. That's what we call the crowding out. So instead of the output level staying at YC, it, it has come back to y, Y1 star, which means that this distance here is what the crowding out is measuring. 